Welcome back, blade lovers. Something unusual today from what you're usually seeing, although I think you've come to expect uh, unusual stuff from me, I would hope. Okay. What we've got is the Bastinelli Knives or Creations Anomaly. Comes with this cool little playing card. So you've got an ace up your sleeve, right? That's kind of the idea. And this is a Doug Markheida Bastinelli Knives design, collaboration. That's the word I was looking for. The anomaly. And we're going to get to why it is an anomaly, but first let's take a look at what it is. Looks like a ring dagger. but borrows, if I could say that, some ideas and features from the El Calder Ed Calderon, El Calderon, Ed Calderon Elvia, which is a uh, talon or claw type blade that is used in uh, Ed's Manifesto, which is his style of uh, blade use. Uh, put together from a long history of law enforcement and narcotics officer work with blades and against people, nasty people that use blades. We'll leave it at that. I did a, a still image of this and put it up on Instagram because this handle reminds me so much of uh, a box wrench. But uh, definitely it isn't. It's quite thin. We're going to do some measurements. Uh, all of the markings are uh, on the edges. So uh, there is the name of both Doug Markaita and Bastinelli Knives. And uh, here is where it's made by Fox in Italy of none other than N690CO. A good stainless steel and uh, one that holds a good edge. So you might wonder how this is used. It can be held in a conventional grip and a fellow by the name of Southnark has put together, he was the designer for the Pical knife for Spyderco, uh, does like the edge up and use it to kind of get out of a um, somebody grabbing your wrist or close quarters and um, he tends to cut up and uh, to the sides with this. However, the um, Elvia method of knife use is like this. Pacal or Pical point down jabbing and ripping. So you have uh, what constitutes really an animal's claw shape. And we know they're very effective. Tigers and leopards and bears and even your kitty cat. So uh, not a large knife. The interesting thing is, uh, why don't we get to that in a little bit. Here is a uh, decent kydex sheath that comes with it with a belt loop so this can be inside the pants or outside the pants uh, in a horizontal position. It was, uh, looks like it was quite a challenge to create a uh, sheath for this because sometimes the point will hang up right about there but once you get it in it pops out pretty well. There is a detent of an indent we'll call it in the kydex sheath that mates up with roughly that part of the handle that holds it in place. We're going to do some quick measurements and I'm going to talk about this a little more and do a comparison whatnot. It's not a big knife, it's meant to be discreet. It's uh, 6 and uh, 7 eighths. The cutting edge we really won't talk about the blade. We'll talk more about the cutting edge is like two and an eighth. The 
thickness of the steel and the thickness of the handle are going to be the same thing. So we're going to do that in millimeters. And it's four millimeters. We'll grab it again here. Four millimeters. So that's the actual stock, and that's what it's going to be, I believe, right about here as well. Yep. So basically we've got a four millimeter handle and a four millimeter blade stock. Meant to be, again, thin, discreet, could be carried as a neck knife, got plenty of holes. I feel uh, it probably needs a little bit more thickness here and there is a custom version that is done uh, directly from Bastinelli Creations with a really nice um, katana style cord wrap on there. I may do my own or I may look into some other methods of uh, thickening that out and making it just a little more grippy. Although uh, definitely flat enough that it serves the purpose of a kind of a hideaway knife. Uh, certainly one with special purpose. So if you look at holding it that way with the finger through the ring, see if I can back out any more. That will work. They did some nice angles on this. So you can see that I'm just going to use this to kind of show you the offsets. So we've got that angle for the offset of the ring. We've got that line or angle for the handle. And we have more or less a point that's pretty much on line with the handle. Even though it looks, well it is slightly cocked back. So when we hold it this way, it's both set back and yet the point because it curves ends up on center. It's an interesting setup. But if you don't like the ring, so if you're a student of Ed Calderon and uh, you don't really care for rings because they uh, they don't care for them because it dedicates it to the hand because it can be the knife if it's pulled out of your hand can break your finger etc. But um, of course Filipino Kali use and uh, Indonesian Silat use of a uh, karambit style knife would state otherwise. But there's the offset. So why is the offset so important? Because when it's up to the first knuckle, or the second knuckle rather, middle knuckle, which is where karambits should be held, it lines up perfectly 90 degrees to the forearm, to the edge of the hand. But if you choose to not use the loop, you've got plenty of room for all four fingers and you can tuck your thumb either over top or here and you could use this for the Elvia type techniques. Very interesting. And if you chose, you could use it this way for the South Narc style. They make the shiv pick Clinch pick, sorry, clinch pick. I'm crossing a bunch of companies together. They make the clinch pick, which is kind of along these uh, design lines as well. All right. So having gone through all of that explanation, hopefully it was of some value for you. Let's look at this compared to, that's a very radical um, Karambit design. That's the Enforcer by Braus or Bros. And here is the Mako folder Mako, but also by Bastinelli. Three distinctly unique designs that may look similar to you, but this is designed for Karambit only. Has a uh, Lots of thickness in the handle, plenty to hold on to. And the force is delivered to the point forward and ripping outward. However, there is a school of karambit where you would hold it this way. 
and claw forward. So in that case, the edge is up, or the, the blade is up. In the traditional karambit use, the edge, I should say the blade, is down. Interestingly, with this Mako folder, it's karambit style, but the edge is out, but the belly of the blade is out rather than the hook. You can use this directly down in jabbing, stabbing motions. If you pull back, there's no edge there, but that could still be done with using the point. But it's going to be belly or edge out. However, this one can be used as a conventional life knife as well. So uh, three unusual designs, but getting back to the anomaly, that's kind of why it is an anomaly. Stacked up against Griptilian, you can see it's far smaller. Folding knives still have that advantage, however, of folding. So smaller when it's folded, larger when it's open, you can decide which is better for you. But if you carry in a fixed blade, this would definitely carry relatively easily in the pocket. If you're into front pocket carry, you can see it isn't really that large and it's very light. Let's weigh it up quickly with the sheath. So with the sheath, it's only 3.77 ounces. Without the sheath, 2.38. Very light knife, but again, there's no handle material. But it's a good candidate for uh, cord wrapping. Good candidate for, um, I'm getting some shrink wrap, uh, large shrink wrap tubing they use on uh, handles of... Uh, uh, baseball bats and golf clubs and so forth. I want to see how that works out. can be easily removed. Just cut off if it doesn't work out. Um, if you do wrap this, you have to consider that you may need to reshape the uh, sheath since a good amount of the handle goes into the sheath. Just a thought. So hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of off the beaten path review of the Bastinelli Marchita Anomaly. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. We'll catch you soon.